Hi, this is Chris Crawford from Capstone Method. This is part two in the series I'm calling Reflex Release. Uh, in part one, uh, basically what I was explaining is that many times there's a structure that's locked uh, and lower down on the other side of the body there's something that is locking up that is basically the primary and the upper dysfunction is actually a reflex. A reflex would be much like if I took a tennis ball and threw it at someone's face reflexively they'll turn and flinch and a reflex can't be overridden so if you're in this case it will be a first rib if you're up there working on a first rib and it's just not going to release uh, and that's how I found this uh, the first time with one of my clients I was doing some mobilizations and uh, his right first rib was just completely locked down and both of these releases I'm demonstrating is after I got the concept I just found this in the process of doing my work so if anybody out there finds additional um, reflex releases let me know because I'm sure there's a lot more of them I haven't come across but what we're going to do today is this is going to be a very predictable pattern that uh, it, it either works really great or it's just not there and what we're going to do is we're going to release the eighth rib on the left side, usually it's right, right below the tip of the scapula, and that's going to actually reflexively release a locked up first rib on the right. Again, very cool technique. Alrighty, so the palpation for the first rib is I'm just going to pull the upper traps back and put a, a fingertip, or I like to put my thumb pad on, on the first rib, and then as I rock the head into right side bending I could feel if that rib is dropping down and if there's joint play or basically I could also take the slack out and then go ahead and spring it and find out if this first rib is locked up. Now the, re the relationship that I found and again this was kind of accidental and when it works it works really great is if I turn the person over on the left side the eighth rib will usually be posterior and lateral. So the correction is I would take the rib angle and I would push P to A um, to release the demi facets and again probably up to about 90 seconds and then I would maintain that pressure and then go lateral to medial and again I would hold for another 90 seconds. After that release I would go back to the first rib and retest. If this is the reflexive pattern, the first rib on the right side will com completely release and it will stay completely released for uh, a substantial period of time. It doesn't work in the opposite direction. It's another release. This is the one I want to show you today. So I'm going to go ahead and get Lori in here and we'll do the technique. All right, to find this hypomobile stuck first rib, meaning the one that's not moving, I'd come to the very anterior um, edge of the trapezius, pull it back, and go straight superior to inferior, so I'm on the flat part of that upper rib. And then I would take Lori's head without putting compression on it, and I would take her rocker into right side bending. Now what I should do is I should feel that rib drop down each time, and if it's unyielding, and especially since if I spring it and compare it to the other side where I take all the tissue tension out and push down, the side that's unyielding is the side that needs to be treated. In this case, this relationship is always the right first rib to the left eighth rib. And I'm going to lay Lori face down. I normally do this supine, but you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing, so you'll have to do a little transposing. But I'll show you how to do the release with her so you can actually see what my hands are doing. All right, this is the setup for the technique. Normally, Lori would be uh, supine. And the reason I like to do that is because I can come underneath the rib angles that uh, will be palpating, run at an angle like that. They're not real clear on this, uh, this model but I call it playing the upside down piano so once you get on the rib angles uh, if you push posterior to anterior which is easier to do when she is actually face up um, you can actually feel where one of these ribs feels like a stuck key on a piano and that's where you know you'll be treating. In this case and the relationship and the reflex we're talking about for some reason this eighth rib on the left side will get locked up in this pattern 
And what it is, it's gone posterior and lateral. What we're going to do is we're going to come right in front of the rib angle and push um, posterior to anterior, and that will decompress the demi facets. We're going to hold that for about uh, 90 seconds. And then I'm going to maintain that, but I also will be taking and pushing at a slight upward angle, um, lateral to medial. So when I do it, I kind of have this position where I'm pushing on the rib angle, in front of the rib angle this way, and pushing on the edge of the rib, and doing that at the same time for the second part of that release. So again, I'd be pushing down, and then the second part of the release I'd push in. And after those two 90 second cycles, I'd come back and recheck the rib angle and make sure that it was normalized. And then I would turn Lori over and repalpate that first rib. And if the reflex relationship is there after this release, this will completely release. It's pretty amazing. Um, to find it on Lori, I would find the uh, inferior angle of her um, scapula and now she has her arms up which I normally wouldn't do because that's going to elevate the scapula. I'd put them out to the side of the table and then I would palpate down and this is the rib that's stuck and again I'd be pushing P to A 90 seconds and then uh, lateral to medial recheck go around to the first rib and again this relationship only works for left eighth rib to right first rib. Um, I'd like to thank Jerry Hesh for introducing me to this concept. As far as I know, I don't know if Jerry has actually found this one. The two that I'm demonstrating are the ones that I kind of found in the process of my work. So as long as you have the concept and you start kind of exploring this, you'll come up with your own connections and it's pretty amazing stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed these uh, videos.